Welcome. In this playthrough of Gloomhaven, Jaws of the Lion, we complete scenario five, a deeper understanding, the final training scenario. So in this game, as far as rules, basically what they're talking about is boss mechanics. So going over what we're going to see for a boss monster. So they're going to be immune to some effects. Their health is typically going to be multiplied by the number of characters and their abilities are going to be determined by the boss monster ability deck. And that's pretty much it for new components. So for our story, we need to kill the blood tumor. Our introduction, you identify the most horrid smelling of the corridors leading off from the Aberdeer basement and continue your search for answers about what is happening to these corpses and why. Lighting torches, you descend into the dark recesses. Moments later, you hear the scuffling of feet and hissed whispers coming from in front of you. The ritual has been interrupted. We will finish it at the Nexus, but there is a brief pause and then cursing. They approach quickly, stall them while we complete the preparations. The echo of footfalls starts to recede before another voice emerges from the darkness, but how I cannot hold them off myself. Open a rift, the voice yells. How much farther away they must be stopped. So you begin to rush forward. Clearly these maniacs don't want you to smash your way through, so that's exactly what you're gonna do. That is until multiple red lights appear in front of you, violently ripping open the fabric of reality into some other plane. The circle of rifts illuminate the face of the zealot at the center, full of panic and fear. From the rifts emerge creatures of pure chaos, their movements of nightmares flurry of claws, wings, and tendrils. One of them grabs a screaming summoner and forces him into a gaping maw in the demon's chest. There is a wet crunch and the man's head disappears. The creatures turn their attention to you. They fan out, eyeing you maliciously while one finishes its meal. So we have got to make our way to area one here, and then we'll read some more of our story. So we are starting down here with some muddle and poison traps. And our first door. So we'll place those conditions on these traps. And we have two monsters in front of us which are Chaos Demons. So they've got Modal, 8 Health, 3 Movement, and 3 Attack. For our objectives, 2 to Hatchet, 2 to Red. So he has Kill a Monster not adjacent to you while you're adjacent to another monster, or never perform a basic action. Welp. Don't see that happening, so we'll try the Shirker here. And for red, never long rest. And in each of your turns adjacent to any of your allies. Don't see us being a shadow, so we'll go for the Scrambler here. So basically I need to get in here and kill that monster. So I've got a long way to go and several monsters to get through. And with the movement on these things, I am going to have to deal with them. So Hatchet will start with his fancy hat and a power pitch. And initiative of 12. Red is gonna go Flaming Sickle and Blade Dance with initiative of 63. Then our Chaos Demons going at a 98 with a Hungry Maul. So we've got Hatchet, Red, and Demons. Well, we're going to use our fancy hat for a move two. One, two. And then use this as a basic attack for two damage. And we're going to go ahead and use a poison dagger. We've got a base attack of two. So doing one damage. And poisoned. Then a base attack of, or move of two. And a flaming sickle. So we've got some fire going on. The range two, attack of three, and we've got a pool, which isn't gonna happen. He is poisoned. So with that, we do get plus one to our attack. So we're base four, plus one, so five damage. So up to six. 
out of eight. Then the demons attack. So they've got move minus one and attack minus one, but they are going to use any symbol of choice for a disarm. They're going on hatchet. So base two. So we've got a miss, but he will disarm. And so on our next turn, we cannot attack. Remove at the end of our next turn. And then this one's going to have a move two to all the activation. So we'll shuffle this back in. Along with this one. And go for our next turn. And this will get all used up. So Hatchet's going to go initiative 17 with the favorite and center mass. And red, shocking advance and swift strength. Initiative of 14. And these are going at 67 with a seismic punch. So red guard is first. It's going to start with a move three, bringing some light out. So one, two, and three. Then we have attack of two at a range two on two targets and a pull. And that is optional. All positive effects are optional anyway. So attack here, it's going to be base three attack because of the poison or also known as a miss. And then for this one, base two, so two damage. Then for Hatchet, we're going to set our favorite ability up. Uh, allows us to add a plus three to attack on one of our ranged attacks. It's also going to get us two XP. Then we are going to move three and push two. So one, two, pushing one, two. So this guy goes through two traps and will become poisoned and muddled. Then they'll go. Uh, movement is minus two. So he's still got one movement, so he's going to set up his attack here pretty good. So it's attack plus one and push two. Fortunately, he doesn't have the green for the double attack. Well, then he wouldn't have moved. He would have stayed there on that one target. So four attack coming in, taking us down to four. And push two, so one, two. I guess he could have just pushed him here. So this one doesn't have to move to attack. We'll be at disadvantage for base four. So four damage coming in, which would be enough to kill us. So we will lose one card from our hand to negate that damage. And just because of space, I'm gonna set this off to the side. And then push two, one, two. Of course, we lost our token there. So that wasn't a good turn. So for the next round, bring that down, do some shuffling here. So Hatchet's coming in with a care package and stopping power, initiative of 30. Red's got the Shield of the Desert and a Blinding Sickle, initiative of 10. And the Demons are going at 20 with a Whirlwind. So we've got Red, the Demons, and Hatchet. So we'll go ahead and use this for a move two. Then do our attack three. So it's going to be attack four at a range two. So five damage, which is enough to take him down. Then the Chaos Demon's going to get to go. So he's got a normal move, but it is a range two attack. 
So he doesn't need to do any movement. That target area will hit this area. Oh, and for that ability, that did go up. So for red, damage of two, one damage. And here, base two, one damage. Then Hatchet's gonna go shooting with some stopping power. Attack of three, four because of the poison, then seven because he's gonna be our favorite. Uh, but it is a range two, so we do have to do our movement first. So in that case, we're gonna move three, one, two. Heal ourselves for one. And bring out the leaf. Or earth. Healing one up to four. Then we can shoot over here. For base seven. Which will take him down. And we are going to drink our healing potion to heal three. It's up to seven health. That will end the round. So for hatchet next round, I'm gonna do a disorienting barrage and second win. Hoping to move and just pick our target or favorite token back up. So initiative of 51. Then we'll go with the six here, Healing Sands and Flame Shroud. So we will go first. So we will place this out. It's gonna create some fire. Now the next five times an enemy enters a hex adjacent to you, that enemy suffers two damage. Then move one, we still have one movement left, but we are going to see what's behind this door here. So we've got some treasure and a lot of traps. They do three damage each. Got an elite zealot and one of these chaos beasts are back. And we'll just finish our movement in the door and we will get all attacks targeting you gain disadvantage this round. Well, I guess before we do that, we get to see what they are going to do. So Chilling Breath moving at 13 to minus one. Yeah, we'll just stay right where we're at there. So the demons are next, and then the Zealots. Be going at a 65 after Hatchet. So the demon goes next. It's gonna have a movement of two. So one, two, no targets. Hatchet goes. Do our barrage. So we've got a range of three, so we can target this guy. It's gonna muddle and a damage of one or attack of one. So two damage. Which I magically already have out there. And muddled. Then we will play this for a move three. We're just going to move over here, get some money, and our favorite token back. Now we'll end the round. Well, we do need a short rest over here. And we are losing our fancy hat. All right, we're gonna go with center mass and stopping power, initiative 24. Then warrior of the sun and twirling sands, initiative 38. So we'll check out the demon, going in at 98 with a hungry maul. And our zealot 
Got a hex whip at 19. So Zealot is first. Then we've got Hatchet, Red Guard, and the Chaos Demon. So the Zealot's going to have a move of three. One, two, three, but not close enough to attack anything. So with Hatchet, got a range two, attack of three. We can draw a line of sight from this square to that one without going through anything, or that corner. We've got an attack of three. So six damage, that works. That will take care of him. Then we have a move three and a push two. So one, two, three, pushing away, one, two. So going through two traps, taking six damage. So red's turn and the demon is out. So we're just gonna use the bottom one here for a move two. And until the end of the round, we're gonna get Shield one, but the end of round is on us. But we do get some light. And end of round, these go down. Chaos Demon's gonna be shuffling. Along with Hatchet. And we're gonna get a short rest with uh, the Red Guard. So we've got him shuffled up. Getting Hatchet's cards reshuffled and a short rest. So we're going to be losing one card here. And losing our Blade Dance. All right. We're going with second win in the care package, initiative of 18. Then Healing Sands and a Sickle, initiative of 32. Zealot is going at a 50, doing nothing special. So we're going to start with an attack two at a range three. So one, two, three. Whoops. Swinging for two damage. Plus two, which will be enough to take him down. Then we have a base move of three. We get to add plus two movement and gain one if you killed an enemy this round, which we did. So one, two, three, four, and five. We can go start that mess. Don't think we want to go that far. Oh, I did pick this up. And we get an XP, so up to three. Then our biggest move here is a move three. So one, two, can't quite make it to the treasure and nothing to attack. And nothing special does nothing. So end of round. Well, at the end here, I think we'll just go with this. Uh, initiative of 51. And I could loot here, but I hate wasting my whole turn just to loot. All right, so we'll just do a move three and give ourselves a shield going pretty quick. So our quick turn is one, two, and three. Getting some light. And we're gonna get shield one and more light. Then here, we're going with a the basic move and which triggers some rating here. So as horde as those creatures were, nothing can quite prepare you for what lies beyond this final stone door. A huge cocoon of bloody flesh pulsates madly in front of you. Bulbous and wrong. Seeping fluid drips to the floor as it thrashes with malevolence. Nexus needs only a little more energy, yells a rogue man looking to you in a panic. We'll just have to take yours. So the special rules, the blood tumor starts the scenario with C times four damage. So it's got eight damage on him. 
Any time any figure other than the blood tumor suffers damage, the blood tumor heals that amount of damage. If the blood tumor is ever at its maximum hit point value, the scenario is lost. So he comes in there with zealots on each side of him. And so he is immune to being disarmed, muddled, and being stunned. His special abilities both have him healing. So he's going to have 20 health. He's got eight on him, so we need to do 12 to him without him healing. So basically, there's no reason for us to hit these guys. All right. I'm just going to put his damage here. So he's got eight on him. The zealots be going with ranged attack here. A range of two. And the boss will be doing his special one after them. So we're going to end our movement there. So we have a range three for six damage. We're going to make this guy our favorite. So we've got nine damage. All right, nine. So six and three more, so five. 17 out of 20, so that's a good start. We get two XP and we lose this card. So the Zealots do not have move. They only have a range of two, so one, two. They can't target anything, so they are done. And then the Lingering Strength. Which means he's gonna heal himself too. And ending the round. And a short rest over here. Guess I probably should have long rested first. And we are going to lose our stopping power. So Hatchet will be going with the Center Mask Care Package, initiative of 24. Red, Shield of the Desert, and Swift Strength, initiative of 10. Zealots. Going with initiative of 77. And the boss will be going at 85. So hopefully we can kill him before they even get a turn. So we've got red going. And then hatchet. Then the zealots. Then the boss. So red, moving to. One, two. Then we have a ranged attack of two. We can target two, but we're just gonna target one and then a pull. So base two, so zero damage. But we will pull in closer and that will take two damage. So up to 17 out of 20. Then for hatchet, going center mass, attack three, range of three. So three, four damage, which will take him to 21. And that is our goal here. So we've killed the blood tumor. So then our conclusion here. Bloody sack explodes into a shower of Viscarian goo and the zealots who spent so much energy trying to protect it collapse to the ground. It is quite the awful putrid mess but at least it's over. And then one of the dying men laughs. You think this will save your city? Doom approaches as more of our experiments grow in power. Gloomhaven will soon be engulfed in flames and screams will echo throughout the streets. The blood god will consume you all. Your thoughts return to the widow Sandy and you grab the man demanding to know where Roland and these other experiments are, but he is gone. Instead, you grab a chunk of the tumor and decide to bring it to the university. Perhaps the researchers there can use it to shed some more light on the situation. So we're going to gain 25 experience each on top of the six we gain for the scenario, plus what we gained over here, and we find a new location. So our new location on the board. For Hatchet, we just gained 36 XP, so we go to 62. So we've leveled up and we kept four money, or we get four money. 
And then for red, we've got an additional 31 XP, so up to 52, so leveling up. So for leveling up, now we're going up to level two, take the two level two cards from your character's large box and choose one to add to your pool of available cards. You always get to add one new card equal to or lower than your new level. We're also gaining a perk and our maximum hit point value will go up. Our options here is a harvest sickle. So attack four with a range of two, bringing out two elements. Initiative of 52. Also got a move five. Uh, loot each hex you enter with this movement and an XP, but we will lose that card. And then we have barbaric instincts. Shield one, pull one at a range of two. All adjacent enemies suffer one damage. And move two with an attack one and a wound. Tough choices. I like the big attack in the range. But I like the quick initiative and the options. I think we'll go with Barbaric Instincts. And for a perk, I'm going to replace a negative one card with a plus one card. For Hatchet, we have a repeat shot. Attack three at a range of three. Add plus two attack and gain an XP if the target has your favorite token. Initiative 31, and on the bottom, attack 5, range 3, bring out some air, gain an XP, and lose the card, versus a ricochet. Attack 2 at a range 3, then attack 2, target a different enemy with, within range 2 of the target of the previous attack ability. So that's pretty interesting. Initiative 56, on your next four attacks, when possible, one enemy adjacent to the target suffers two damage. But I'm, he loses tar cards too quick. So I think we're gonna go with the repeat shot. And for his perk, remove another two minus one cards. For our goals, Hatchet did not get his ability, but Red was able to never long rest. So he'll get another check mark. So he's got two out of three. Meanwhile, Hatchet has not been doing very well on our goals. Then we will get a city event. So you are minding your own business in the sleeping line when a rough looking Anox sea captain rushes up to your table. I've been told you're the folks to talk to if you have a problem, she says. A number of goods have gone missing for my ship at the old docks. Track the thieves to an abandoned warehouse, but I have reason to believe they may be more than I can handle. You look up at the huge Inox one more time and then scratch your head. Could be a lucrative opportunity, so long as you don't get killed. Option A, demand payment up front. Option B, accept the job proposal. Well, we're generous, nice people. We'll go with option B. Uh, the Inox breathes... Breathes a sigh of relief, then a smile cracks across her face. Good to know I can count on you, she says. We outcasts have to stick together, right? You're about to argue with her assessment of you when she produces some extra coin as thanks. So we gain five collective gold and a new location, misplaced goods. So there's our new place we can go. So we can go to six next or 20. And I gave the five coin to Hatchet. So that is the basics of playing Gloomhaven Jaws of the Lion. Hope you've enjoyed these playthroughs. If so, please click on the like button below and be sure to subscribe. Thanks for watching.